This chapter we are going to deal about estimation for decision making. In business, we will have to estimate a lot of parameters. For example, I have to estimate the projections. Next year, what may be my projections based on the past? So, such things will help us to understand where we stand in business and what decision to make so that we can improve our business strategy and we can come out successful in business. This helps almost all the managers in each and every business to come out in flying colors. Now, based on samples, we saw what is sampling in the previous sessions. Based on samples, we are going to make some inference. We are going to collect some data and based on this data, we are going to tell the whole set of population, this is the answer. So, this inference may be helpful in many aspects. So, here estimation plays a vital role. Based on the sample, we are going to estimate what is happening. So, that is where estimation is entering into the picture. Estimation. Inferential statistics is mainly of two types. One is information about the population, that is the estimation. The second one is forecasting. Based on this estimation, we are going to tell our future characteristics. Last year, this was the sales. So, my forecast and my estimate is going to be this. So, here I am standing and I have to expand my business in this strategy. These things help us to understand the business in a very well scientific way. And here sample statistics help us to estimate the parameters of the population and the sampling theory itself helps us to estimate the difference between the sample statistics. Why there is a variation between the sample statistics and the population parameter. These are all few examples where estimator and the population parameter are being told. That is for a mean, the estimator, the sample statistics is x bar and the population parameter is mu. Similarly, for variance, proportion and standard deviation. These things we are not going to explain in detail because these are all two, two statistics and these are all not going to help us in depth for our business decisions. Now, what is an estimator? What are the qualities for an estimator? An estimator should be unbiased, it should be consistent, it should be efficient enough and it should be sufficient also. So, these are the four points an estimator should have. It should be unbiased means if I am going to take a sample, I am going to estimate this is how my population behaves, then it should be unbiased. This should not mislead me and it should be consistent enough. I can take that and I can consistently tell, keep on every year I can tell the projection based on this estimator and it should be efficient enough, it should be self-explanatory and also sufficient, it should not be inadequate, it should be well adequate so that it can represent the whole population. These are the four important qualities of an estimator. Now, statistical methods are of two types, one is descriptive statistics which we explained in the initial chapters, mean, median, mode and so on, which is going to describe about the business happenings and the inferential statistics is on which we are going to take some inference. We are going to select some samples, collect some samples and from there we are going to make some inference. This inference statistics is mainly of two types. One is the estimation. On the samples, we are going to estimate and forecast something and we are going to test the hypothesis. These two things play an important aspect in inferential statistics. Point estimation. Estimation is of two types. The first one is point estimation on which one point we are going to tell this year my sales is 1000 crores. So, my next year sales will be 1200 crores. I am going to tell in one single point that is called as a point estimate and it is a value of the sample statistic which is going to represent the population parameter and mainly it is used for avoiding the cost of measuring all the elements of population. If I am going to select each and every month sales and if I am going to tell, it is going to be difficult. Instead, I can pull up everything in one value and tell. That is the main advantage of an estimator. The estimate provides information for decision making. As it is only one point, it is very useful and I can take further decisions and improve my business strategy based on this. Confidence interval. The second one is interval estimation. Like if I am going to tell my sales is this year it is 1000 crores, next year it is going to vary between 1200 to 1300 anywhere approximately. So, that is called as an interval estimation. I am not going to 
clearly tell this is my value but still I can give a small interval in which my probability of happening is more. So, this is much better when compared to estimation point estimation and it is a range of numbers believed to include an unknown population parameter and it measures the confidence in percentage that the interval contains from the parameter of the interest. This is the sampling distribution of a mean and if I am going to take a 95 percent confidence interval then the 95 percent is going to fall inside the mean and the rest is 2.5 this side and 2.5 that side. So, those regions are called as a critical region. Standard error, it is the standard deviation of the sample statistics. Anyway, any sampling or complete enumeration definitely some errors are going to happen. This error has to be measured. So, the standard deviation of this stamp sampling statistic is called as the standard error which occurs everywhere. In statistics, we cannot avoid error but we can try to minimize the error that is called as standard error.